All right. Thanks, everybody, um, for joining us. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture, our July meeting to order. Um, I would like to share our vision and purpose. Our vision is expanding our world by celebrating creativity in San Diego. Our purpose, the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture serves in an advisory capacity to the Mayor and City Council on promoting, encouraging, and increasing support for the region's artistic and cultural assets, integrating arts and culture into community life, and showcasing San Diego as an international tourist destination. Um, my name is Jana Putre. I am chair of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture. I'd like to ask my colleagues on the commission to keep your video on throughout the meeting to remain ex as accessible as possible to our audience. And I'd like to ask staff to do the same. Now we're going to do a, a quick roll call to confirm commissioner attendance. When I call your name, please remember to unmute yourself and say present. Commissioner Frank? Commissioner Blevins? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brown? Present. Thank you. Commissioner DiCenzo? Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hughes uh, had already notified me that he would be absent. Commissioner Jackson? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Meza? Commissioner Nwana? Commissioner Friedman? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Schoenbrunn? Commissioner Schoenbrunn? She's Commissioner still trying Whipper? to get in, Janet. Got it. Okay. Commissioner Whipper? All right. Thank you. Your attendance has been noted. Also joining us today is city staff, including Executive Director Jonathan Gluss, Chief of Civic Art Strategies Christine Jones, Senior Public Art Manager Chuck Miller, Senior Arts and Culture Funding Manager Deanna Agostini, Project Manager Bel Reza, Arts and Culture Project Manager Carla Centeno Aguirre, and Civic Art Project Manager Laura Bullock as well. Um, before we get into today's agenda, I'm going to call on uh, Bel Reza to give us a rundown on the guidelines for today's meeting. Thank you, Chair Putre, and hello, commissioners. Um, in an effort to provide greater accessibility, members of the public may join the meeting as webinar attendees in order to provide virtual non-agenda and agenda comment in real time. Commissioners, city staff, and authorized presenters are attending the meeting as panelists, and the meeting will function for them identically to a typical Zoom meeting. As a refresher, please note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of your Zoom window. Please remember to stay muted when you are not talking and to unmute yourself when you'd like to speak. You will also see the chat window button when wanting to make a motion, second a motion, or participate in a discussion. Please type speak in the chat box, and Chair Putre will call on you in the order entered. Please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling that you'd like to speak in order to comply with Brown Ad. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Belle. Um, we now move on to non-agenda public comment. The public was invited to submit public comment on agenda and non-agenda items via a web form, which was accessible through the agenda and also on the commission's website. Members of the public may also join this meeting as webinar attendees. If members of the public have submitted comments in writing via the web form, staff will read aloud public comment. Also, I will call on Bell to read aloud any non-agenda public comment or call on any attendees who would like to provide comment. Bell? Okay, um, I will um, open up the floor and then we do have one written as well that I'll read at the end of um, this. So to those members of the public in attendance, please click the button to raise your hand and indicate that you'd like to comment. I will enable you to speak and send you a prompt to unmute yourself in order. When I call your name, please state your name for the record and you will have three minutes to provide comment after which you will be placed on mute again. If you are joining via phone, please press star nine 
um, to raise your hand, I will call on you by the last four digits of your phone number. When I call on you, please press star six to unmute yourself. Um, please raise your hand now if you'd like to comment, uh, to provide non-agenda public comment. And Andrew, I'm going to unmute you now, and you have three minutes. Hi, good morning, Belle. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, perfect. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Waltz, Director of Programs at the NTC Foundation at uh, Arts District Liberty Station. Uh, thank you, commissioners and staff, for hosting this meeting. Um, I always learn a lot and really appreciate you having this open forum that's accessible here. Uh, I just wanted to give, give a really brief uh, update of some of the things happening at the Arts District and um, let you know about an, uh, an opportunity to kind of share your thoughts with what we're doing. First, as August starts to roll around, I just want to let you know that we do have two really significant public events that we're really excited to help um, host and, and create, make available for San Diegans. One is Art Walk San Diego happening on August 7th and 8th um, in Ingram Plaza. And it's just going to be an amazing weekend filled with several hundred artists and, um, and it'll be open air, uh, open flow for public to enjoy. Also, um, really significant Liberty uh, La Jolla Playhouse's pop-up WOW Festival will be showing up for a kind of off-year cycle special event August 13th and 14th uh, on the North Promenade and we're just couldn't be more elated to help support having them showcase their programming and, and host that at the Arts District. Um, and then just lastly real quick, um, while we've been taking this, this time in the last year and a half or so to work on programming and how to uh, um, reposition what we're doing and develop new avenues to provide programming, um, that process is starting to kind of um, wrap up with one final uh, outreach and uh, opportunity for outreach. And so we have launched a public program survey. Uh, it really only takes about two or three minutes to fill out. Um, and I'm hoping I can share a link to that in the chat or at some point later after the meeting and have any commissioners, staff, or any other, any other folks in the community fill that out. But that's going to really help us better understand how to best serve the community um, and meet them where they're at in terms of, um, you know, how a program's tactics kind of connect with them, either in physical space, uh, virtually or otherwise. Um, and I'll share that link again. And thank you too to staff and commissioners who have already filled that out or have shared that. I've, I've seen a lot of support on Facebook, so I appreciate that. Uh, and those are my comments. Thank you very much. Oh, I okay. think you were muted. Oh, sorry. Thank you. And um, we did have one that was submitted for Putre, so I'll go ahead and read that. Okay, and this was submitted by Peter G. Kalivas. Um, today, I wanted to finally be able to share the developments of a new program I've been trying to establish the last eight years, but struggled due to a variety of systemic politics within our San Diego public school system. The PKG project will be implementing 10 week long PKG dance centered residencies this fall 2021 and spring 2022 at Lincoln High School a historically underperforming Title I school in the San Diego City Council District 4 where the PKG project is based. San Diego City Council member Monica Montgomery Step of District 4 has endorsed this long time needed PKG dance programming which will result in the creation of the Lincoln Dance Project featuring Lincoln High School students who will perform at community events included but not limited to the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration, January, 2020. Taste of Diamond, June, 2020, the Diamond Street Festival, August, 22. This program will highlight the arts as a vocation. And that's it. So back to you, Tripoli. All right, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for your comments. Um, next up uh, is our uh, chair's report. I hope everybody had a chance to review the minutes of our last meeting on June 25th. Um, would someone like to make a motion by typing speak in the chat box to um, accept the minutes? Commissioner Smith? So moved, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bossler? I second. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? 
Okay, seeing none uh, before we vote, is there any public comment for this agenda item? Please raise your hand now if you'd like to um, comment on this item. Seeing none, Chair Boutre. Thank you. All right, uh, now we will take a vote and uh, you will unmute yourself when I call your name and uh, respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Uh, do remember you don't have to have attended the meeting to vote or discuss. All right, uh, Commissioner Blevins. Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Bossler. Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Yay. Thank you, Commissioner Desenzo. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes is not here. Commissioner Jackson. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Friedman. Yay. Commissioner Smith. Yay. Thank you. And Commissioner Schoenbrunn, did you get connected? All right. Um, and my vote is a yay. So uh, motion carries. All right, uh, I wanna just talk briefly about our ongoing uh, DEI work. Uh, we all met in June for our second DEI workshop when we, we started to consider what would um, an equity statement or a strategy for this body could look like. And uh, Leah Goodwin sh uh, shared some examples of what those look like in other cities and agencies, uh, other parts of the country, other parts of California. And um, we kind of had the sense that we wanted to continue working with Leah and that the ultimate goal would be that we would create an equity plan or a strategy document um, that would inform our work going forward. And um, certainly, be, uh, you know, I, I, I know Tyler's not here, but I'll mention it anyway, would inform um, our cultural plan too. Um, so um, it became clear too that working on something like that uh, would be uh, unwieldy at a meeting like this with this many people. Um, and so um, I've asked um, Commissioner Nwana to kind of lead that effort. And um, she and Commissioner Jackson are going to get started on working with Leia um, and a committee as a kind of a task force. I don't wanna say a subcommittee, but a, a task force. It's a specific kind of a project over the next few months and um, Gina uh, will help uh, Udoka lead that effort um, and uh, work with all of us and commission, uh, not mm -hmm. Commissioner Leia, but, um, but Leia um, to help us work through these uh, issues in a way that is impactful and authentic at the same time. Um, so uh, we're, we're hoping that uh, early fall, we'll have um, something coming back to the whole commission from the task force that we can all together uh, investigate and unpack and see if it's you know, real for us. Um, also, um, I wanna continue our work as a body uh, with Leia at the August commission meeting. So um, that, uh, that's what the agenda will be for next month. Um, I, I'm hoping the executive committee will agree with me, but I, I think it was a very valuable um, exercise and I'd like to continue doing that kind of work so that um, we don't lose our momentum on that. Alrighty, um, is there uh, any comment on that? Um, I just like to ask, um, so the task force, can any of the commissioners volunteer to be on that force? If um, Commissioner, Commissioner Friedman, if you are volunteering, I am happy to say yes. Um, I hope you will reach out to Commissioner Nwana. Um, I can help connect you. That'd be great. And yes, I, I already had you in mind for that. Um, so thank Thanks. you for uh, volunteering. Thank you very yeah, much. Because I um, think that it's really important. Uh, you know, I'm a big proponent for the Asian American community and wherever possible, I wanna make sure that the voice of that community is involved in any sort of diversity work. Absolutely. And um, I also believe that a person with your professional background would be very helpful, uh, um, uh, not to use, a, it's not a great term, but wordsmithing, if you know what I mean. I, I do. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words and I'll try not to disappoint you. 
Janet. (laughs) (laughs) You're here. You're here. I appreciate Uh, it. All right. Um, Let's move on to committee reports. Um, And if you don't mind, um, I would like to skip ahead to public art because we have a couple action items. And I know that Commissioner Smith uh, has a hard deadline. So uh, time wise. So Commissioner Bossler, is it okay with you if we um, skip you for the moment and come back to you after public art? Yes, of course. Thanks very much. Alrighty, uh, and moving on to public art, um, before we begin, uh, we have to do conflict of interest disclosures. Um, and these, uh, these uh, action items uh, affect contracts with the new wow. Children's Museum and artist Risa Puno. So please assess it whether you have any conflicts to disclose. And when I call your name, if you have no conflicts, state out loud, no conflicts. And if you do have a conflict, please recuse yourself from the discussion and voting on the action item. All right, uh, Commissioner Blevins. No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler. I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, do you have any conflict with the New Children's Museum or uh, the artist Risa Puno? No, I do not. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brown? No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner DeCenzo? No conflict. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jackson? No conflict. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Friedman? No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Schumbrun, did you get connected? All right. Uh, and I have no conflict. So um, I would like to call on, uh, let's see, Chuck Miller uh, perhaps can provide us with the overview of the proposal and the staff recommendation. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Chair Petre. Um, so for uh, so this being the first of two action items from this month's public art committee meeting, uh, the action or the uh, the item is a temporary exhibit proposal uh, from the New Children's Museum uh, for an artwork called In the Balance by artist Risa Puno. Um, and the recommendation is that the executive director of the Commission for Arts and Culture approve the temporary exhibit titled In the Balance consisting of an exhibit of artwork by artist Risa Puno for temporary exhibit in Children's Museum Park. Could we go to the next slide, please, Carla? And the one after that. Okay, so um, uh, staff received a temporary exhibit application from the new Children's Museum. The applicant is proposing an exhibit of artwork by Brooklyn-based artist Risa Puno consisting of a maze of interconnecting wooden balance beams proposed for Children's Museum Park and would form a triangle approximately 116 feet by 100 feet by 58 feet and approximately 18 inches high, centered on the turf area of the park. Uh, City staff evaluated the application utilizing criteria contained in the department instruction and concluded that uh, if the exhibit is installed Uh, and uh, maintained properly, it will pose no undue safety hazards or liability for the city in any other way. Uh, The applicant would be solely responsible for all the costs pertaining to the exhibit. Uh, The exhibit would provide uh, an aesthetic and cultural experience for residents and visitors to the convention center, Harbor Drive, Marina area of downtown and the new Children's Museum. Uh, The placement of the artwork will reactivate Children's Museum Park after a protracted closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Risa Puno's work in the public realm is nationally recognized and the proposed exhibit exemplifies artistic merit and quality of workmanship. Um, So uh, the exhibit is to be sited in the center of the triangular turf area of Children's Museum Park, uh, south of West Island Street uh, and the main entrance of the Children's Museum building. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please, Carla? Um, uh, the site is adjacent to the new Children's Museum and the applicant has indicated that museum staff will regularly monitor the site. Um, and so in the image on the right here, uh, the, the, uh, 
building with the gray slanted roofs is the museum and uh, the triangular turf area to the right of that on the other side of West Island Street is the area that where the installation uh, would take place. Um, so the applicant uh, has collected letters of support from community members and organizations, including the Port of San Diego, museum benefactors, and resident associations from nearby residential towers. And the exhibit is proposed to be on view from the end of August through mid-November of this year. Uh, could we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> So uh, uh, this just to give you another kind of rendering um, with uh, anticipated use and also to give you kind of a scale reference. Um, the, uh, so um, we could go to the next slide, Carla. So once again, uh, the Public Art Committee has recommended uh, that the Executive Director of the Commission for Arts and Culture approve the temporary exhibit titled In the Balance, consisting of an exhibit of artwork by artist Risa Puno for temporary exhibit in Children's Museum Park. And I'm happy to answer any uh, questions. Charles, uh, it's Fritz Friedman. I have a question. Um, I'm sure this is just in my head, but um, is who covers the liability insurance for usage of those uh, of the artwork, if the kids are on and they fall over, who's liable for that? Uh, that would be the uh, the applicant, the new children's museum, okay. and 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 the uh, the agreement they would enter with the city would would be contingent upon evidence of that insurance. Right. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Desenzo. Yeah. Um, is this? I haven't been down to this park. Is it open twenty four seven to the public? Is there fencing around it or anything? Uh, no, no it, is, it is open 24 seven. It, the access is not restricted. Um, it is well lit. Um, and the installation, um, there are margins to the installation. So there is a, a six foot margin around the installation itself with clear passage. So it wouldn't, the, the beams wouldn't be edge to edge in the park. It's uh, so that there is, you could walk through the park or walk along the sidewalk and access the rest of the park. Okay, and then what about um, like safety and security in the evening? Is is there going to be people there monitoring it, or is it going to be uh, video monitored or whatever? I just I, I feel like it's a good place for. Uh, I mean, it's probably a great place for bad activity to happen already but I mean if you you know put something like this in there it might attract even more so is it is it going to be monitored for safety 24 7? Um, yeah my understanding is yes that the uh, the museum staff will will be monitoring it regularly throughout the day um, including in the evening um, uh, not a lot of other details were provided but um, it is it is once again it's uh, it's very lit up at night. So um, there's not a lot of hiding places per se. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the hiding places that I worry about the most. Um, I mean, I think this is a really great project. I think that, um, you know, it is at the Children's Museum, so it's targeted for children, but I also think it's a fabulous idea for um, us aging people to, to play on as well, because um, it's something that can help contribute to strength and balance and meditation, which we all kind of need right now. Um, but I also believe that, you know, if you're walking on the path and somebody is coming towards you, there's also a sense of cooperation and collaboration that might have to happen when you meet somebody and you have to decide, well, who's gonna step off the path and you know that kind of stuff. So I just, I, the more I think about this and the look at this project, I really enjoy all of the possibilities that it offers to all age groups. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Commissioner DeCenzo. Um, I agree for what it's worth, I agree. All righty, uh, anybody else? Would somebody like to make a motion um, to uh, approve this recommendation? Commissioner Friedman? Don't, for, uh, don't forget to turn on your microphone. There we go. Sorry about that, everyone. Yes, okay. I approved it. Thank you. 
Uh, so you're you making the motion? Yes, I am, I move to accept the uh, action. All right, very good. And uh, Commissioner Bossler? I second. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna second it, that's all. I love the project. Oh, great, so we have a second and a second, that's great. Alrighty, uh, is there any further discussion? All right, well, uh, we will go ahead and take a vote. I'll call your name and you can respond out loud. Uh, yay, nay, or abstain. Commissioner Blevins? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler? Yay. Com thank you. Commissioner Brown? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Desenzo? Absolutely yay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jackson? Yay. Thank you. Uh, dur, dur, dur. Commissioner Friedman? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? Yay. Thank you. And uh, my vote is a yay also. All right, motion carries. Next up, uh, this is another action item out of public art. And uh, this recommendation affects contracts with University City Parks Council and the artist Andrew Sanchez. So we're gonna go through the um, conflicts thing again. And uh, when I call your name, either state no conflicts or if you need to recuse yourself, say so. All right, Commissioner Blevins. No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler? No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Brown? No conflict. Thanks. Commissioner Desenzo? No conflicts. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson? No conflict. Thank you. Commissioner Friedman? No conflict. Thank you. And Commissioner Smith? No conflict. Thank you. And I have none myself. All righty, um, uh, Chuck, I'm gonna ask you to uh, do your thing again, if you don't mind. Certainly, thank you, Chair Poutre. Um, so uh, this uh, action item is for a temporary mural uh, proposal from the University City Parks Council titled Sunburst California Scene by Andrew Sanchez. And the uh, uh, recommendation is that the executive director of the Commission for Arts and Culture approve the mural titled Sunburst California Scene, consisting of a mural by artist Andrew Sanchez for temporary ex exhibition on the dumpster enclosure adjacent to the Stanley Park Recreation Center parking lot. Um, so uh, uh, next slide, please. Um, staff has received a mural application from the University City Parks Council. The applicant is proposing a mural by Marietta-based artist Andrew Sanchez for a temporary one-year mural on the Dempster enclosure adjacent to the Stanley Park Recreation Center parking lot in University City and would cover three sides of the enclosure, uh, a total of approximately six feet by 25 feet. Um, so here you can see the, uh, the general location of the proposed mural. Uh, next slide, please. And so uh, here's just a, a street view to, to uh, kind of zoom in on the, uh, the enclosure itself where the mural is proposed and what it would look like from the street. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and here's a, a, the enclosure close up as well as a rendering of the mural itself. Uh, so staff has evaluated the application utilizing criteria contained in the department instruction and concluded that the applicant would be solely responsible for funding the mural. Uh, the mural would provide an aesthetic and cultural experience for residents and visitors to Stanley Park and activate and enhance the area surrounding the Stanley Park Recreation Center. The proposed mural exemplifies an acceptable level of artistic merit and quality of workmanship. Uh, the proposed site for the mural is owned by the city and maintained by the Parks and Recreation Department. Nonetheless, the applicant would be solely responsible for maintaining the mural. Uh, and the mural, or I'm sorry, and the applicant uh, presented the mural proposal for feedback uh, from the Stanley Park Community Recreation Group and received uh, unanimous support. Next slide, please. Uh, so once again, uh, the recommendation is that the executive director of the Commission for Arts and Culture approve the mural titled Sunburst California Scene, consisting of a mural by artist Andrew Sanchez, 
for temporary exhibition on the dumpster enclosure adjacent to the Stanley Park Recreation Center parking lot. I'm happy to take any questions. All right, Chuck, thank you very much. It's rather inelegant description, I must say, the dumpster enclosure, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> there it is. Um, would someone like to make That's a motion? Fine. Type speak in the little box. Oh, was that you, Tracy? Is that new? Yeah, that was that was me. Um, how long? Uh, I can't remember. How long is the temporary exhibit for? A year. Uh, uh, oh, only one year. That's what this one is. <laughs> I'm just I'm laughing because it seems so odd that we would be asked to approve something so beautiful on a dumpster enclosure. <laughs> I understand that it's city uh, property, but it, it's just like, I, you know, where I live, murals just pop up randomly with no approval whatsoever. And it just seems odd that, you know, somebody would ask us for permission for this, but um, I think it's beautiful. I think it's great. Um, I would make a motion to approve this and, and even longer than a year actually, but um, yes. All right, thanks for that motion. Do we have a second? Dehan Blevin seconds it. All right, thank you, Commissioner Blevins. Commissioner Brown? Did we miss your second again? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I second <laughs> also. <laughs> you get credit. You know, one thing I do want to mention about this, um, you, you kind of touched on it, uh, Tracy, is that in this neighborhood, um, murals don't pop up. And it really isn't a very colorful neighborhood. Not every utility box is painted colorfully. I mean, this this neighborhood is rather, um, it's a public art desert. It's the reason I got involved in this in the first place. So um, that's something to consider as well. And I'm, I'm glad that we're finally having little projects like this, even though it's bitty, um, it's, it's progress. That's what we're looking for. All right, so um, we did we have a, uh, Yes, we did. We had a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Okay, see none. Oops, sorry, did I miss somebody? No, okay. Uh, since there's no further discussion, we'll go ahead and take a vote. I'll call your name and you'll respond out loud by unmuting yourself and saying yay, nay, or abstain. Commissioner Blevins. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Bossler. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner DeCenzo. Yay. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Jackson. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Friedman. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Yay. Thank you. And I'm a yay. All right, motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Um, and your University City neighbors appreciate you. All right, um, now just uh, to move back, we skipped over our, um, uh, sorry, policy and funding report. Uh, and you were kind to let us jump ahead like that so we can get those action items done. Um, would you like to go ahead and give a report from your committee? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. So policy and funding committee did not meet in July. Um, and the August policy and funding meeting has been rescheduled. Uh, instead of being on Friday, August 13th, it will occur on Friday, August 20th. That is my brief report for the all right, thank you very much, uh, everybody. I hope makes a note of that and check your calendars. Um, I would like to note that our um, Project manager, Bell Reza, is a whiz at getting stuff on the calendar. And um, thank you very much for making sure you send all those things out. Um, I don't know how I would manage this part of my life without that. So thank you very much. All righty, um, advocacy and outreach. Our, uh, our committee chair is not here. And the same uh, for commissioner engagement. Um, since I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, Commissioner Smith uh, has to boogie. I'd like to go ahead and move on to uh, director's report. Jonathan. Thank you, Janet. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you. <clears throat> 
I have four quick reports, but I'd like to start with um, a joint announcement with uh, Commissioner Smith. Um, Rebecca, take my floor for just a second for the big global news. I know, and the cool thing is we didn't even have to cue this up. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about congratulations, San Diego. Congratulations, San Diego, Tijuana. We are one of two finalists for the World Design Capital 2024. So awesome. And we are up against Moscow. Yeah. This is huge. This is huge for us. So I also want to do a quick shout out to Andrew Waltz, who spoke with us earlier from the NTC Foundation, because he and Alan Zyder last night did something that I have spoken about at this table, this Zoom room, many times before, which is our cultural nonprofit organizations need to sync up with the business community. And Alan and Andrew last night were at the regional chamber's first in-person gathering um, for this season, and they were working the space with all of these businesses. Um, and it was just really great to, to hear Alan talking about, you know, the new theater that's going to happen in Liberty Station and hear Andrew talking about the WOW Festival that's going to be also in Liberty Station. And they're doing so to local businesses. So again, that's how our arts organizations are going to get funded um, as we think about how do we do this lift for all of us. I say all of that because when we are talking about the world design capital, this is for everyone. We're looking at um, economic benefit to our region in the millions of dollars. Um, and we're also going to just think about a lot of really, really, really fun parties and events that we can actually do in 2024. Um, but this is huge. So I just invite you to um, maybe we can send the link out. Jonathan, I'll send it out again to the commissioners and the staff. Um, if there is a call to action, there will be a GoFundMe account that's going to go out soon. It, anything that you and your associates can do to really shine the light on this really great initiative and then just start to get the word out. Um, the Can I let them know, Jennifer, uh, Jonathan, the, uh, the design committee from Toronto will be visiting later on this fall and that's how they're going to make their designation if it's yeah. us or if it's Moscow. Yes. Commissioner, thank you. Very exciting. Uh, I also want to uh, give um, <clears throat> uh, a few more updates. Last month, you all um, endorsed changes to council policy 100-03. Staff will be presenting those recommendations to the Economic Development and Intergovernmental Intergover Committee of City Council, otherwise known as EDNIR next week, uh, Wednesday at two o'clock. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested in um, participating at the audience level, um, your colleague Tyler Hughes as your advocacy chair um, is orchestrating that. Um, I will say every meeting that we've had internally uh, has been with electeds thus far has been extremely positive. So we're feeling very good about it. Um, thank you everyone who attended the SD practice openings two weeks ago. Um, great turnout, uh, lots of media coverage. We were very pleased with it. So stay tuned as the pieces, uh, well, number one, we will have a, um, a closing event at Bread and Salt uh, that will be more of a panel, uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> and then stay tuned over the fall as the pieces start to migrate uh, to various city or to various library sites across the city. Uh, and we'll keep you apprised of that as well. Um, and then something that I haven't formally reported on yet at the full commission meeting, but some of you are familiar with um, the arts and Econ economic prosperity study that is conducted every five years by Americans for the Arts. It's a comprehensive study that looks at cities and counties um, of all sizes across the country. The data is used by policymakers at the federal, state, and local level. Um, 
we are nearing the time for AEP six, that is as it's called. Um, the actual work will begin in January of 22 for calendar year 22. So I plan on bringing back to you all at the September meeting um, a formal report on who, what municipalities uh, throughout the county are uh, participating. Uh, and we are hoping that the county is going to participate. Uh, so more news on that uh, at the September meeting. And then a f uh, one final piece of information, um, staff is working hard, very hard right now in teeing up um, um, workshops and training meetings um, for FY23. Those will begin in August and September through September. We recently sent out the RFI for fiscal agents. Uh, and you may recall uh, that's the tool that we're using to um, facilitate information to non-arts organizations across the city to get to encourage them to act as fiscal agents for small organizations and individual artists. Um, if you haven't received that in your inbox, we'll send it out again. Please use your networks to get it out um, to any organizations that you think could be good candidates. And again, don't have to be arts and culture organizations. In fact, it's probably better if they're not. What we're looking for is really trusted agents in, in, at the community level. That is my very quick report, Chair Poutre. Any comments, any questions? Thank you for that, Jonathan. Um, does anybody have something to add? All righty, well, Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, staff, for all the things that you're working on. Um, does anybody have uh, some new business for a future agenda? Alrighty, um, was there any public comment submitted for this item? Please raise your hand now if you'd like to comment on this agenda item. And we do have um, one person. So Carol, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Carol Manifold and I am the volunteer executive director of the Coral Consortium of San Diego, a grateful recipient of OSP funding. I was dismayed to see that very few San Diego County arts and culture organizations were approved for FY22 funding at the California Arts Council meeting this week. I would ask that the San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture consider if training or other initiatives might be created to improve the support that San Diego area arts and culture organizations may receive from the California Arts Council. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, it, are there any other comments or people who would like to make a comment? Seeing none, Chair Boutrette. All right, thank you, Bill. Alrighty, uh, next up is our speed round. Uh, what culture uh, creativity experience has anybody had that's notable that you wanna make a mention of? Personally, um, I loved uh, San Diego practice uh, and um, I'm hoping this weekend to get to the second half of it. So uh, thanks again for that. And uh, let's see. Is there any public comment on that? Just raise your hand now if you'd like to comment. Seeing none. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, is there any further comment from commissioners? All right, seeing none, then I will uh, go ahead and uh, call this meeting adjourned at 1220. Rebecca, um, I hope you make your uh, appointment. <laughs> Uh, thanks, thank you, everybody. For, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for coming and participating. Uh, it's nice to see you all, and I hope you're enjoying your summer. Hey, everyone, see have you. a good weekend. See you. Good to see everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now.